Hello, welcome to another Game Overtime Discussion. Today we are going to talk about um, our top five predictions for the NX. Mine and Joseph and I are here and we are both going to be discussing our own personal top five. It's not like a unified group, so it's really our top ten. Realistic games and games that'll totally never happen. And mine is kind of a mix of realistic and not realistic. And these are not always launch titles, like most of my games that I have are I'm not expecting a launch. Right. I'd like to think that most of my choices are reasonable, but there's definitely, like, two of them that aren't happening. So, do you want to start or should I start? Duh, you can start. Alright, so, um, I'm gonna go from, like, my, the game that does not hype me, uh, as much- I'm gonna go from my least favorite to my favorite game. You're going- you're going in order of hype? Yeah, and the okay. uh, last one is- will be the one that hypes me the most. Um, I'll do the so, same. The first game I am putting on would be Luigi's Mansion 3. I think Dark Moon for the 3DS sold relatively well. And I think it's... I saw a rumor early on wondering about it. And I think it's very possible we could get that again. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I think that uh, the original Luigi's Mansion was a very interesting game. Um, probably one of the better GameCube games. Um, yeah, definitely. Dark Moon on the 3DS was... I don't know, it was fun. But it was a bit of an experience, or but it was a bit of an experiment. I don't think the mission system really did the game a whole ton of good. Just kind of broke it up and made it feel weird. I think the game graphically is one of the better games on 3DS, and it's definitely very fun. But it wasn't really my thing. And I think that, like I personally like Dark Moon a lot, but um, I like it. It's just not my thing. But um, I could also see maybe doing like an open world ghost hunting adventure kind of thing. Interesting. I don't know, like, that'd be my idea, like, imagine Ghostbusters put into a video game with open world, but done well by Nintendo with Luigi. So you mean, like, rather than being restricted to the, to a mansion, uh, you'd have, like, the Mushroom Kingdom in general? Yeah, it'd be, like, a town, or, like, a couple towns, or it'd be, like, the kingdom itself, where you have the castle, and then, like, this, I don't know if they call them, whatever they call them, suburbs. Right. I can't believe I was called that a suburb. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna move past that. Uh... Yeah, I just sound stupid. Oh well. Uh, Splatoon 2. Um, uh, we will, will definitely be talking about NX ports of Wii U titles. But that'll be a separate video. But um, yeah. Uh, there definitely will be a sequel to Splatoon at some point. There's no way they're not going to do that. Yeah, eventually. Um, I probably won't be till three or four years after launch when it's released. Right. If it's at the, two at the at the least, because yeah, it comes out in 2017, I predict it'll come out in late 2019 or early 2020. Right, you can't just release all the system sellers immediately, otherwise your your system's going to sell and then you'll have a drought. Yeah, and, and you, both you and I are guessing there's going to be a Splatoon, um, just the first one, a port to the NX, so, with added fun functionality and stuff, so. Right. But, um, not much for me to say about that, what about you? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, um, what, what they'll do differently, I guess they'll probably have, um, Probably some some uh, some of the maps that are in the current game, and then a bunch of new maps. Um, they'll probably have uh, a bit more um, at launch rather than having to update and add stuff because they couldn't. They were at a, uh, they were at a bit of a time crunch, so rather than pack everything in incomplete, they packed a little bit of stuff in and then finished it and released it as free updates. I feel like um, they'll probably continue to do that, but they'll start off with a bit um, more content just to. Uh, not uh, bore people w while waiting for updates. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, the game had a lot of character, um, so I think that they'll probably keep up with the whole, like, I guess, urban theme of it. And it was um, very popular. Yeah, uh, people on the internet really liked Splatoon. Uh, I hope and pray that there are more Splatfests. I hope so. That would be cool. Yeah. And, um,. Maybe a better party system, because I don't really know what else they'd add to the game besides um, uh, more of the same done better. Well, new game modes, I can see. Well, it's kind of like how there's a new Call of Duty every year, which I don't want a new Splatoon every year. Please don't. <laughs> yeah. But um, and it's kind of like how they have those shooters every year or two, and I think that there are. I think that it's going to be more of like an every four or five year kind of thing. Yeah. But I can definitely see there being strides made with new technologies, maybe new characters. Like, yeah. instead of just having squids, maybe it's, like, squids versus another... Octolings? Oct yeah, another kind of creature. 
hybrid thing. People actually ha did hack the game and were able to play as Octolings rel relatively easily, so maybe it's a scrapped concept. Yeah, maybe. So I can definitely see that being a possibility. But um, I, as you said, there's a lot of character, really cool music, I thought, very unique. Yeah. And I feel like it kind of rejuvenated the shooting industry, because right now, in terms of the first and third person shooter multiplayer stuff, it's they very suck. much the same. All garbage. I mean, not all garbage, but the majority is undesirable. Yeah, I mean, I like my Battlefront probably more because I'm a Star Wars fan than I am a shooter fan. Yeah. But Battlefield 1 just looks like another shooter i mean yes it's in world war one but i mean it doesn't look like it's in world war one because there are tons of weapons that don't make sense that are there yeah i enjoy tf2 and overwatch mostly because tf2 has an amazing community it's free to play without being pay to play arguably and overwatch is um kind of like um it, it, it took what tf2 did and did it fantastically in a different way yeah and i love overwatch um and we'll probably bring some stuff here. I have a solo channel that I've been doing some stuff, but I, I admittedly I've not been very active on there because I've been super busy and game overtime is kind of my main focus. Right. So, um, but I will probably try and do more stuff here. If not, we'll probably do stuff here, but that's not a promise. But um, both uh, Joseph and I love Overwatch. Yeah, and I don't even have the game yet. I just I played it at a friend's house, picked up Farah, and was decent at the game. I played it at John's house, it was great, so I can't wait to buy it. Yeah, and I I, I think that if you can get it on PC, you should, just because it's cheaper, but, um, I mean, unless your PC doesn't run it very well, then you should get it on console, obviously, or if all your friends have it on console or something like that. Yeah, I'm really hoping that on, on console, the ability to use a mouse and keyboard is added, just that Blizzard can't say... PC players have an advantage because of the superior control scheme, and then just not bridge the gap with, with uh, cross-platform. Which, that's a load of BS. That's just Blizzard being lazy. Yeah, like, if... Th the issue here is that uh, is that Sony doesn't like uh, to let cross-play become a thing very easily. So what needs to happen is keyboard and mouse support for consoles, so that we Which can they already actually have unite people. In Overwatch? Sort of. Like, I mean, not in Overwatch, but I mean, consoles in, in general, other games. you can hook up a mouse and keyboard. Yeah, I know that um, Final Fantasy XIV and presumably a lot of other MMOs allowed you to do that because playing an MMO with a controller sounds like hell. But it's just, it's really stupid that whoever's halt, I mean, Microsoft clearly doesn't care. They're, they've they're stated great. that they're all open about it, which you can yeah. say what you want about their gaming division, but they are very open to new ideas and stuff. They're innovators in, in some ways, yeah. I think that if PC can use can use controller or keyboard... Console should be able to use controller or keyboard and bridge the gap and let everyone partake in crossplay. But and look at and look at Rocket League. That is a game that is arguably better with a controller, but there's still cross-platform play. Yeah. Although, what game are we even talking about? Splatoon. Right. We're talking about Overwatch, but then we're talking. About, sorry, that was a bit of a tangent. Yeah, it's it's a thing that we both are passionate about. Well, well, maybe we'll make that a second, a separate discussion video. If we feel yeah. the need to. Sorry, uh, next game. My next game is Super Mario Sunshine 2. And this one I could not be more hopeful for. I Both he and I love the game. It's per my personal favorite 3D platforming game. It takes the 3D platforming mechanic and then really does something new with... I mean, I know people probably find it tedious to you know spray water around, but I think it added a pretty interesting mechanic that could definitely be expanded upon. I'll, I'll, say, I'll, yeah, I'll say this about Sunshine. It's not my number one game, but... I don't know if it's below Galaxy or tied with Galaxy, because Galaxy was fantastic too, but oh, I, yeah, that de was fantastic. I definitely do like Sunshine more than Galaxy 2. Which, if we get Galaxy 3, him or I are not going to be upset. We both love the Galaxy games. Absolutely. Like, Galaxy's been around for so long that I won't feel like they're just churning out the same thing over and over again, because it'll only be the third game in, what, nine years? And that's that's fine. That's fine to me. Yeah, and I personally want Sun that I mean Sunshine was like my first game that I fell in love with. That's just why I put it on the list, but I'm perfectly happy with a Galaxy game or I a new 3D Mario game, but I feel like if they're going to do a 3D Mario game, they sh are probably just going to continue something. One thing I like about Sunshine is that it was the last true open world 3D Mario game. Yeah. Um uh we got Galaxy which let you explore a lot, but the levels were definitely they were linear. Um, Super Mario 3D World and 3D Land um, also had that issue. It's not even an issue, it's just a difference in game design that I don't prefer. They they had that too. Um, I'm also very partial to 
uh, GameCube games because I learned to play games uh, from GameCube. Melee was my first Smash Brothers game. Uh, Ocarina of Time, the re-release on GameCube, was my first Zelda game. Double Dash was my first Mario Kart. Sunshine was my first Mario. So I'm just very attached to GameCube. Basically the same for me. Like I, I don't remember because I know that back when I was growing up, I had the N64 and the GameCube. I don't remember if when I started playing games, if it was before we got the GameCube or if we just had both and I used both. But either way, it was like Mario Kart 64 was really the only game I played on N64. Besides, well, I played Star Fox and then Donkey Kong 64. But um, most of the games that I myself, when I was like, that was when I was really young, when I actually you know knew what I was doing, GameCube was my first system that I like loved. Yeah, and Super Mario Sunshine just has a lot of bright colors. I like the tropical theme, and I think Flood is very interesting way to shake up uh 3d platforming yeah and just like all the the town and the characters had so much character like, yeah yeah i don't try to think of another word but um yeah so unique which I, even if they bring it to a new area like i think that um rosalina and the lumas um had plenty of character to them i think that the story in the library was uh pretty interesting but i really think that sunshine did uh interesting characters better um, and another thing that I really liked about it was that even though, um, thanks to the Comet Observatory, all the, uh, all the courses in Galaxy feel like part of a big connected world, which is a complaint I had with Galaxy 2, the map just completely ruined that connection for me. What is it with Miyamoto liking to put in Put in, putting maps. in maps? I don't know. Pa what, what we had before was fine. Sticker Star... Uh, the it's new Paper bad. Mario game now. It's, it's, it's like it's. I, I could accept it in Galaxy Two because Galaxy Two is still a phenomenal game. But putting a map in Paper Mario, I I'm, I don't agree with. Um, I what I what I loved about Sunshine was that um, you didn't really have a map. You even though you did definitely have to select. Um, you, you had to select a course. You still had to go somewhere to get to the course select, which uh, made it feel a bit more connected than i think galaxy galaxy 2 was yeah and i think weren't there like not side missions like we have today but weren't there like little side things that you could clean off that might have some yeah. stuff you have to do you could do things in delfino plaza which you you can't do can you no you, you might be able to do stuff in the, the comet observatory. observatory but to a great greatly lesser degree there's barely anything i think you could hop up on some stuff and then there might be some award or something, or you can talk to some Lumas, and there you might get a picture or something, but it's nothing like what you could do in Sunshine. Yeah, in my opinion, the closest thing is just the hungry Lumas who appear in the observatory. Yeah. Anyways, but yeah, we both love um, 3D Mario. I mean, we both love Mario in general, but especially 3D Mario games. So yeah, my next game is Metroid Prime 4, or a traditional Metroid game. I'm guessing it's going to be um, a fourth Metroid Prime game, just because it hinted at the at the end of Federation Force. And I personally would prefer a Prime game, but I'd be perfectly okay with a Super Metroid style game too. Yeah. I certainly am not as experienced with Metroid as I should be. I played Zero Mission because of the Ambassador program, and I didn't finish it because I got stuck. Then I started playing Super Metroid, and then I stopped playing because I got stuck. Then I played Metroid Prime, and then I stopped playing because I got stuck. Tisk tisk. If I probably just paid a bit more attention, I probably wouldn't get stuck. I just have not made it through a Metroid game. And I haven't played much of Super Metroid, I've only played a bit, but um, I've played a game called, I think it's called The Fall? Is that an indie game on the Wii U? Yeah. Um, I played through that, which is very much in the Metroidvania kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I was um, playing through that, and I loved it. So I'd be perfectly happy with either one. But I love the Metroid series, so... I think I might have that because of the Humble Nindy bundle. Yeah, that's how I got it. Cool. But um, And then my fifth game, which will probably happen, is a Phoenix Wright game. Yep, Capcom I has been very faithful to uh, Nintendo's handhelds in that area. So yeah, I'm really, I if you didn't know, Phoenix Wright is my favorite series of all time. Um, in terms of my favorite game in the series, I'm playing through Dual Destinies right now. I have not played the Ace Investigation game, so I played through the trilogy, and then I played through the Apollo Justice game. I have played a bit of versus um, Phoenix Wright um, and Professor Layton, but then I got ended up buying Dual Destinies and put that aside. And but, obviously he's never played the Japanese one that they're not going to give us because why we, we don't deserve it. Yeah, I think it's because it. it's all about... I mean, even though they already make it 
Japan culture and the other ones apparently is like really Japan culture. Why don't they just like release it on the eShop and the weebs who still want it like me can get it? Yeah, I'd like to get it. Because I'm obsessed with Phoenix Wright. It's my favorite game series of all time. I'm looking into buying the manga and reading on it. I didn't... I'm ashamed to say to not finish the anime. I started watching it <laughs> and then I forgot about it and then I got busy and then I just forgot about it. And That's alright. Everyone forgot about it. I forgot about it and I still want to... I still want to finish it. Me and Brad were actually talking about that earlier today. Uh, he stopped at like episode 11 or something. I'll, we should do like a binge watching thing. Yeah. And, and then like do like a season episode review. Thoughts. Or like a mid season review or, you know, we'll do, we'll probably do something regarding to the anime. But yeah, I love Phoenix Wright. I love the trials and tribulations, the huge surprise that happens in the last case. I loved, uh, Edgeworth is my favorite character overall in the entire series. Maya's really cool gumshoe. I like Phoenix too. All of them are great, and I l- the dialogue is fantastic. Apollo Justice kind of meh, and I thought the Justice for All really wasn't that great besides the last case. Yeah, but um, I'd say Trials and Tribulations is probably my favorite game in this. Well, my favorite case is the don't, last. Don't. I'm not spoiling anything. Mm. I mean, like, uh, I agree, it's the best case, but there's so much what? wrong with that case. The last. No. Ca- the last oh, case of Trials and Tribulations. No, that's not my favorite case. Oh, I thought I, I thought you were saying that, and, and I'd have to I'd, I'd have to punish you for that. No, my favorite case is just because I like Edgeworth so much. As a, I mean, he's just such a cool and interesting character. And I, we, you know, first in the first game, we just hated him. I mean, not hated him, but you know, he was made to look like a really horrible person. And then the last case, well, the last case on the Game Boy version, the DS version, it's not the last case. But um, and the fourth case where it goes and uh, we play where you um, are going against Von Karma and you're defending Edgeworth. There's a lot of cool character dialogue that goes on there that I just really appreciate. And I think the last case of Justice for All is really interesting. Yeah. And then I definitely like the Trials and Tribulations case just because I think there's a lot of emotion, but there's so many logical flaws. You, you mean there. like the bridge? What? The, the bridge. Yeah, which we're not going to spoil it because oh, if any of you have, have not played Phoenix right, just go play it. I have and, so many issues with that case. So yeah. many issues. Oh, well. So many issues. But whatever. That's 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 not what we're discussing. It's just... Mm, it, it bothers me still. And then uh, I'm playing through Dual Destinies. I like it so far. Um, I think it's probably good that it's not just phoenix even though he's still my favorite to play as yeah um i think and i actually like apollo a lot in dual destinies he's really interesting but um uh i think it's good that they add new characters and i'm interested to see how maya comes back into the series with the six one which spoiler alert if she's not after the first three she is not well she was in the professor layton cross phoenix right game but that's not canon as far as i know why is my dog upstairs all right, so yeah, Phoenix Wright, go play it. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. And Maya's in the new game. She was only in the first trilogy. Yeah. And well, she's in the cross with Layton game, but that's on canon. So, if I remember correctly, but yeah, I love Phoenix Wright. I hope there's, I hope they continue to release a game on the NX. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to my games. Um, yep. I don't know if I should order these. Like, I'm going to order these in terms of hype, but I don't know if I should also like talk about the realistic ones first I, I guess i'll just talk about what would hype me up uh the least to the most um let's see retro's game now i'm not like i'm not saying that retro is a bad studio or anything quite the opposite retro is amazing um there was a rumor months ago that they were working on something a new like a new ip i think it was confirmed definitely that they were working on something but speculated that it was a new ip And I'm not sure if that's true, but if they are, I'd like to see what it is. Um, Because uh, I found it interesting that it's not Donkey Kong or Metroid. I I feel like if it was Donkey Kong, I'd not that Donkey Kong is bad, but I'd be a little bit like angry that they're working on yet another Donkey Kong game instead of so much more potential. Yeah. Um, So that's really all I have to say about that. We don't know what it might be, so not much that either of us can really say about it. Yeah. Um, F-Zero. It's oh, been, yeah, I thought about that. It's been a long, long time since an F-Zero game came out, especially since uh, a console F-Zero game came out. The issue with the Wii U um, and why there was no F-Zero game on that, I guess, was because there were no analog triggers, 
or the controller just wasn't well suited for it. I think Miyamoto said that in like 2013 or 2014. Um, and like, okay, yeah, I, I suppose, but the NX is coming out, give it analog triggers and give us F-Zero. But it, because like F-Zero is a very fun franchise, um, and it, Captain Falcon doesn't really get much of a spotlight besides Smash, and that's not really where he came from, so it would be interesting to see a new proper F-Zero game in HD, even though Fast Racing Neo is so good, and it has put a bullet in F-Zero by being the good F-Zero. It's really good. The new generation. Yeah, I'd love to see an F-Zero game. It's definitely about time. I think that... I almost think that they shouldn't even make... I'm going to regret saying this because I love Mario Kart and I won't do definitely want a Mario Kart 9. But um, I almost think that they should just do F-Zero and then pour it over Mario Kart 8 instead of having to make a new Mario Kart and then just stop neglecting F-Zero, please, Nintendo. Please, please, please. It would look so beautiful in HD. Yeah. At the very least, make like a Super Smash Kart and throw in an extra F-Zero character. Yeah. Something which like is probably going to happen in the future, but not soon. Yeah, I, th I wonder if they're just going to stop Mario Kart games and just do, like, a Smash Kart. That would be cool, but the brand name is so iconic that I think people would have a hard time adjusting. For real. I mean, you could still call it Mario Kart. Uh, you could go, like, Mario Kart Nintendo Circuit, and then just uh, transition the name over a period of, like, three entries or something. I don't know. Yeah. But, Next um, up. Yeah. Next up. Metal Gear... This oh. is totally not happening. Brad, yeah. just, Brad just brought it up and I thought it was an interesting concept. This is my least realistic one. Even less so than uh, F-Zero because Konami is not fantastic and they want to make Metal Gear survive instead of a traditional game or Rising. Um, I think Metal Gear would be interesting for the NX because... Um, and this would really only work as a console title so I'm not sure if it would happen. But um, one, one player could control Snake or some new character sneaking around doing stuff, um, maybe from a top-down view, kind of like, um, I mean, I guess it wasn't top-down all the time, but like, uh, the older games, Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2, um, and another player who has the, uh, little tablet controller, I don't even know what to call this thing, the Gamepad 2, the, the person who has the Gamepad, uh, could be, like, Snake's eyes. Snake uh, wouldn't have that good of a radar system and would have to rely on advice from the second player, which I think would make a really fun co-op game. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Um, I haven't played much in the Metal Gear series personally, but I really like that idea of having a cooperative mentality. And I think actually it should be um, person, uh, not a top-down view, but a third-person view, because then it limits what the person can see in front of them, and it really nails down the need for a second person being around. Yeah, I've also not had a ton of experience with Metal Gear, but Brad has. Uh, he He's played... going through a phase. It's not a phase. Um... <laughs> What game did he start with? Metal Gear Solid? Uh, he got the Legacy Collection thing, and then yeah. he loved it. Or, no, or did he start with Phantom Pain and loved it? I don't, I, I, I don't know, I think he played them in, like, either chronological order or, or, um, or release order. Regardless, he played Metal Gear Solid 1, pretty sure he played Metal Gear Solid 2, like the MSX ones. Um, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid... Wait, did I call the MSX ones Metal Gear Solid? That's just Metal Gear. Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3, 4. Ground Zeroes. He's working on 5. He's maybe played through Revengeance? I don't know. And, uh... Is not looking forward to Metal Gear Survive. Yeah, because of course not. He does, um, Brad tends to, like, really get into a game series. And he plays through all the games of that series. He did it with Fire Emblem, now he's doing it with Metal Gear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm coughing. Um, when, when Fire Emblem came out, um, I got into a Fire Emblem phase, another one of, of our friends got into a Fire Emblem phase. I didn't. Yeah, you should have. It was a ton of fun. That was a, that was a nice phase. I know. Um, I call it a phase, but I'm still playing Revelation. Um, the, uh, uh, Fire Emblem Fates is like three games if you're really gonna play all of them, so you get burnt out really easily. I've personally played through the games a total of like six times, I think just because um, of playing on different difficulties, and uh, two times now, I've accidentally saved over a save file and had to go all the way through it to recover progress. Um, I'm currently playing through Revelation, and 
uh, I'm going to do lunatic runs and stop talking about Fire Emblem because this is Metal Gear. What am I doing? Metal Gear would be interesting. Not gonna happen. Now, um, it's very difficult to decide what my uh, what my number one game is. So I'm just gonna group together and say that ports will happen. Oh, I actually have another original one. Never mind. Um, but yeah, Smash 4, Mario Maker, Splatoon, we'll get into that in a separate discussion. But I do believe we'll be getting a new Mario. I don't think it'll be Galaxy 3 or Sunshine 2, although I would really love either of them. Miyamoto said a while ago, I hope it was Miyamoto or else I'm misquoting, uh, that we'll uh, maybe see a new kind of Mario very soon. Because it seems like that's what happens with each console. Um, on, on the NES we had Mario. You know, just... Mario, how uh, how he started the franchise. The Super Nintendo, we had Super Mario World, which took the formula and improved upon it in millions of ways. Mario 64 jumped into 3D. Sunshine uh, innovated upon that a lot. Uh, Galaxy was uh, very unique, had a bit more of a linear style, but still had incredible physics uh, in terms of planets and gravity and all that. And 3D World w was... Um, a very uh, fun multiplayer game which experimented with being semi 3d but also arguably more linear than galaxy was so now I think it's time to see a new kind of Mario I don't know what it is but I hope it's open world yeah I do too I, I don't have any more thoughts because we kind of I kind of covered mine earlier but I completely yeah. agree I think it'd be really cool to have a new style of Mario game definitely um, now, number one is very difficult to determine, so these are not necessarily in the order that, I, that I'm actually hyped by, because they're very, very close. Um, there were rumors that Game Freak was working uh, with uh, the NX to make a main series Pokemon game. Emily Rogers reinforced that Game Freak is working on something for the NX, or working with the NX, but she didn't necessarily say it was a mainline Pokemon game. So, I think there are a couple possible possibilities. The least likely, we're getting a new Pokemon Ranger game, which I would love greatly because Shadows of Almia was my first exposure to playing Pokemon, even before Diamond and Pearl, which were my first Pokemon games. I love Shadows of Almia, I love Guardian Signs. I've still never played the original Pokemon Ranger. Um, more likely, um, we are maybe getting a new Coliseum title or new stadium title. That would be amazing, especially if they expanded it to include uh, online battling, uh, compatibility with sun and moon, and really cool features with communication. Because that's something I really liked about the Wii era. You had uh, Pokemon Ranch, uh, Pokemon Battle Stadium, and the fourth gen games. From the fourth gen games, or er, uh, you could put your Pokemon from the fourth gen games in Pokemon uh, Ranch to store them, and it was really fun to watch them. And I believe you could receive Pokemon from that game too, and you could put them all in Battle Revolution and Battle Online. Which is in which those are underrated quality. games in my opinion. Yeah, I think Battle Revolution had tons of work to do, but it was the, the way that the games worked together was still an incredible concept, which fascinates me. Uh, it's, it's it's a shame that um, Ranch only worked with Diamond and Pearl in America, and. Um, Battle Revolution, I don't believe, worked with HeartGold and SoulSilver. It, it might have, because they're all 4th gen. Um, and I think it's time to see something kind of like that. Which, now that I'm talking about that, that might actually be what I'm the most excited by. But before I started speaking, the thing that, the possibility that I was considering to be the most likely and the most hype-worthy is, at long last, Generation 4 remakes. Uh, ever since Fire Red and Leaf Green, Nintendo has remade a generation. Uh, every so often. We had 3rd gen, which brought us 1st gen remakes, 4th uh, gen, which brought us 2nd gen remakes, 5th gen with no remakes because they decided to make sequel games instead for some reason, which turned out weird, but not bad necessarily, and then 6th gen, which brought us 3rd gen remakes. Now that we're moving into the 7th generation, I think that having um, a remake of Diamond and Pearl or Platinum would be incredible. Really fun. Yeah. Um, Diamond and Pearl uh, and Platinum were incredible games, um, but to me they're beginning to show their age, which is kind of scary, because those games were absolutely incredible to me. But now, yeah. That, yeah, now, now that I'm older and I can kind of see how games are made and how they work, it's a little bit less magical. Whereas with Fire Red and Leaf Green and some of the older games, 
I think their style was more consistent. It's, it's hard to explain, but they, they've aged way better. Third gen and second gen. Um, and Heart Gold and Soul Silver even have aged better than Diamond and Pearl. So having a remake which works together with Sun and Moon to have some sort of compatibility would be amazing. Maybe a, a 3D Pokemon game uh, in the likes of Colosseum with an incredible battling feature like uh, Colosseum. I mean, Battle Revolution. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool because Diamond and Pearl is, I think, we got both of us into Pokemon. Absolutely. And um, I personally love those games. I would love to see an, especially an HD version because I feel like that's the, I even think a Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver have aged better. I just think the way that they did the character design just kind of makes it look washed out comparatively now. Yeah. I mean, it's still a fantastic game. Don't get me wrong. Everyone should play it. But I think it is definitely a game that would really benefit from a remake. I think even the music has aged. Yeah. Like, all of the music is aged, but you don't realize until a remake comes out how much the music is aged. Like, if you compare uh, Ruby and Sapphire to Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire in terms of music, the difference is absolutely stunning. It's ridiculous. Um, and I feel like you don't need to go crazy and come up with a new style. I think you just need to take the style of the seventh generation and upscale it a ton. And that's that'll be good enough for me. So yeah, these are our 10 games, 5 for each of us that we are looking forward to, or ah, hoping for in the NX. But I have one more. Oh, you do. And this might hype, this this might get me hyped even more than mainline Pokemon games. I mean, definitely not now that I've talked about it, but it's the one that's remaining. Animal Crossing for the NX. Now, I was aware of Animal Crossing since uh, the GameCube version, uh, which I thought was very interesting. I didn't really play Wild World when it came out, but I did get City Folk way back in like 2008. That was good. I put more hours into that game than I put into any other game by like 200 hours. Same. I put, I think it was 732 hours into that game or something, and it's not even that like complex of a game. I mean, it is, but it's like, it's, it's hard to get into game. Animal that much. It is. It was a solid game. It, the visuals I really liked. I enjoyed the online interactions, which I actually got into a lot. Um, the games were fantastic, so naturally I bought City Folk uh, when that came- I mean, I mean, excuse me, New Leaf when that came out. Good job. Yeah, and I played a ton of New Leaf before accidentally losing my file, but I've gotten back into it, and I'm really enjoying um, the kind of advancements they've made. And Happy Home Designer, even though it, it's not the best game ever, I think has uh, a, great, um, a great system for interior and exterior decorating, and I feel like um, if you mixed uh, the ability to uh, decorate houses and even the exterior of houses with the same amazing system that um, Happy Home Designer had combined with the, the powers that come with being a mayor in terms of being able to build with your town, Animal Crossing could, could become uh, a little bit more of a construction focused game, which is great, but there's elements that I'd like to see uh, implemented to balance that. Um, Back when I was way into City Folk, um, I found out that there was an uh, anime movie of Wild World. Um, and something that that, uh, that I really liked about uh, about that was the the town was huge. There were forests. Um, they actually went sailing in a cave to look for the, the skeleton of a dinosaur. And I've always been obsessed with the idea of having exploration of some sort in Animal Crossing. Um, Ores were introduced in New Leaf, so I think that being able to find those in a cave would be cool. And I feel like being able to go boating uh, while fishing would be cool, and maybe some forest exploration too. I think camping is also an interesting mechanic. I could rattle on for hours about this, so I'm just gonna stop boring John. <laughs> it, <laughs> no, I, I completely I, agree. I think there's a lot of potential, especially since it is a hybrid, to be able to bring an HD animal crossing game and there's a lot more power there so you can maybe have bigger towns maybe even like an actual city yeah like um and this isn't my own original idea i forgot who came up with it i i heard it in a youtube video before i think the city was very underused you had you had some shops and you could see Rossetti every now and then uh, if his reset center happened to be open on a friday night or something or saturday but there wasn't much to it i think it would be cool if um the way, that, uh, the way that people were connected was with an apartment system. Um, having that a, would be cool. Yeah, having a huge, huge, huge town 
like that's cool and all but what's one person gonna do uh, in that town of course m more people can have a save file but if one person's really dedicated there's st uh, and no one else is playing on their file they're still gonna be bored in a town that big which is why I think having other players able to live in your town maybe up to six having a town big enough to accumulate to um, accommodate six people would be incredible um, maybe they could build their own houses, or maybe they could move in through an apartment system in the city, which I think would be great. And obviously with that would come maybe more shops. And the only negative aspect of this is it would require an online connection. Yeah, that is that is an issue. Um, I really wish that internet was more accessible for people. It's a shame that it isn't, because it's an amazing tool. But it is expensive, and... Um, even people who are big into games and spend money on games don't really have that strong of an internet connection because they just have what they need for research or casual browsing or whatever. Um, so having a slow connection or no connection would really kind of put a bullet in this. It really sucks. Um, but I feel like if they could implement it the right way, like maybe have different sections of the town separated off by caves and forests so that uh, they were... Uh, they'd only open up once you had people reliably playing. Maybe maybe that could fix that, but I don't know, it's, it still seems like a hard issue to work around. Yeah. Maybe those, maybe those people didn't always have to be online or something. I guess how, how it... Uh, actually... The proposed solution that I had wasn't such a great solution. I was thinking maybe everyone could save their own separate copy of the town offline. Um, that could lead to like compatibility issues in terms of creating stuff. Absolutely. Hold on, let me shut up my dog. She's scratching at my door. But yeah, Animal Crossing has a ton of potential, especially with the island. Um, another another person on YouTube who I think I actually... I think I remember who actually had this idea. I think it was the bit block. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. But um, expanding the island as a way to uh, to have people live with you, um, having like um, some sort of tropical extension of your town on the island that everyone could go to, it's it's an interesting concept to think about. But there's a ton of issues which I think will keep it from being realized, even though it would make the game feel very very connected and much bigger in scale. Yeah, there are definitely a ton of things that could work, and I really hope that this is a possibility. Absolutely. Well, it's, it's definitely a possibility, but like a reality. Yeah, it's it's fascinating to me. I definitely think that uh, Animal Crossing NX needs to be like big, not like overwhelmingly big, but I think they need to really do some cool things with it. And I we think all know that could be a launch title. Yeah, we all know that. I'm 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 fully expecting it at this point. Um, Happy Home Designer and uh, Amiibo Festival have come out, regardless of the quality of one of those two games. Um, <coughs> Amiibo Festival. Yeah, they were still mildly successful. Um, they were cute. Uh, they're at least fun. Uh, I think that uh, I, I debate on that with Amiibo Festival. I think the Happy Home Designer is a, is a downright like pretty good game. Amiibo Festival is fun, but no is one's it? no one, yeah, but no one's exactly going to be putting many hours into it. You, you can only play it so much, and I'm not even inclined to really get the Amiibos, although they're dropping heavily in price. So yes, I am. They're, they're cute, I like them. Um, but Animal Crossing is gaining a lot more attention and being a bigger thing. The villagers in Smash, so they have a lot more room to experiment and maybe sink a little bit more budget into the game in terms of how big they're making it. The Animal Crossing team, um, some of them worked on Splatoon too, so... I don't know if they'd be busy with Splatoon or if they're ready to make Animal Crossing. I feel like they've probably been working on it since shortly after New Leaf. Because there's HD models of all the animals from from uh, Animal Crossing Plaza still sitting around that were also used in um, Amiibo Festival. Yeah. So this is definitely a possibility. And um, I think that concludes our discussion. Yep. So tell us what you think in the comments. Subscribe and like for more. And this is a bit of a longer video, but as we previously stated, there will be a video talking about like Wii U ports coming later yep. on. And if you want any more videos like this, yeah, just please like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. And comment below your top 5 or 10. We'd love to see what you, all of you are hoping for. Yep. See you later. See ya.